Uh, welcome to Gilead Baptist Church. Thanks for being here. My name is Pastor Dave. And uh, we're here, and you're not. Wish you could be here, but you can be here uh, via through them smart things that uh, we couldn't do 20 years ago, bless God. So, wonder if somebody has a testimony of God's love. Chris? I've got two, actually. Uh, first one was when we were feeding yesterday, and so I had talked to two different people, and uh, they're willing to follow God and give up the drugs and everything, and we're going to help them get into rehab. Amen. And then another one, uh, Miss Loretta, her sister Patsy, we went to see her, and she was, uh, she opened her eyes, she couldn't speak. She couldn't even squeeze her hand. So she said, we got to pray. So me and Miss Loretta got over and started praying. She got a little bit... You know, she could say all she could get was Jesus, Jesus. So we oh, prayed over yeah. her one more time. And I'm telling you, before the uh, ambulance got there or anything, she was speaking. She was saying, well, y'all leave me alone. And we went to see her yesterday, and the doctor said there was nothing wrong with her. She was fine. And she was back to her normal rowdy self. Wasn't sick for her. Amen. You know, I said that before the service, the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous person that they live much. See, the Hebrews writer, which I feel is, is Paul, said that God's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Now, forever is a lot, mighty long time. Yesterday is a mighty long time. But if God healed back then through the prophets and his apostles and through everyday peoples, then God still does the same thing today. Any other testimonies? God's love, God's goodness. Let me tell you guys, if God is not moving around you, then you need to change your position. You need to change your position because God is at work. Now, through this hard time in my life, God has spoke to me so loudly through prophecies, words given of knowledge, people clear across the country saying, hey, bro, God wanted me to tell you, all is well. All is well. Just hang in there. Just hang in there. All is well. I uh, go to that next first slide. So that God met me on top of that hill. Now, I've been in a struggle every, almost every Sunday this year on getting up behind the pulpit and preach. That's not only here, but anywhere. Celebrate recovery. I have I've had troubles uh, with things that were going on in my head, the situation that I'm into. But three times my brothers and sisters in Christ gathered around me <coughs> and prayed over me and loved on me. See, I didn't even want to go. And I told them that. And I'm national director, I have to be there. And I went. This is a beautiful picture here. Now, I didn't ask for prayer, but they gave it. They gave it. These guys here are straight up. You know, go ahead and go to that next slide. That's The first slide was in a leadership meeting. The second slide, this lady had come up and touched me on the side. She, she walked up to me. She's uh, one of the Broken Chains members in uh, Oklahoma, and uh, she said, God just showed me a lot of pain in your eyes. Can I pray for you? And I said, yes, ma'am, you sure can. Now, this is standing outside the lunchroom at the Passion Play, and there was probably over 100 people time it was all said and done gathered around me and praying over me. Uh, like I said, God met me on that hill, and God really touched my life. He also had given me a new direction in my life. So soon after the first of the year, I'm going to hit the road again like I did before COVID, and start preaching and teaching. And I'm going to use Celebrate Recovery as a catalyst to have more preaching events and whatnot. Still going to pastor here. Don't worry about me leaving. I'm not going to leave. I've always told you guys I'm going to be here until y'all tell me to kick rocks. And then when you tell me to kick rocks, well, bless God, I'll reluctantly go down the road, but it is what it is. I, uh, also, God has asked me to write two books. Now, <laughs> that, that one I kind of chuckled at God. He said, why do you laugh? 
I said, Lord, I'm dyslexic. I can't spell. Do you want me to write two books? <laughs> and he said, you know, Sarah laughed at me too. I was like, oh, okay. So I'm working on, one of them is going to be my story. I'm going to get in depth on my story. Uh, next week I'll have a small book that was given out in Sturgis and across this world. Uh, if y'all want a copy of it, you're more than happy to welcome to have a copy of it. It's a brief little insertions of my story. Uh, the other one is a devotional. Now, I don't know if it's going to be a 30-day or a 365-day, but God told me to title it uh, Birth Out of Pain. Birth Out of Pain devotional. And, and it's, uh, I've already wrote probably 30 days worth, and uh, it's, uh, it's pretty powerful. It's pretty powerful. And, and, and it's about, you know, Psalms 23, verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. You know, sometimes there's valleys that we're going to have to walk through. Sometimes we're on that mountaintop, and bless God, I was on the mountaintop last weekend, and it was just phenomenal, phenomenal. You could just feel the presence of God. Uh, two people uh, uh, went down with cardiac arrest during that, and Broken chains members laid hands on those that that happened to. Guess what? They recovered. They recovered. Even when they was took to the hospital, they recovered. They said, well, there's no signs of this. Well, that's God in action. Amen. That's God in action. So with that said, y'all pray for me. Continue pray for me and Tracy. Continue pray for my book writing. Because, uh, I mean, it's a little simpler nowadays is because I can talk into my computer and it'll write, but you've got to go back and look at it because sometimes it'll throw a word in there. It's, 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 I'm about convinced, or convinced that Microsoft 365 don't talk country. <laughs> so uh, we're having a little bit of issues with that. Maybe they need to tweak it or something. So if you got your Bibles, hold your Bibles up. Smart devices do count. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can have what it says I can have. And I am what it says I am. And I can do what it says I can do. Pray this would be dear Lord Jesus. Speak to my heart. Change my life. In your precious name we pray. Amen and amen. We're, we're in a sermon series, uh, Mission Impossible. This is part three. Uh, I forgot to change. I thought I changed that, but I guess it didn't. Volume seven, part three. And uh, this is about, we have talked about the uh, parable of uh, the lost sheep. We talked about the uh, parable of the lost coin. And we're going to continue in... Luke chapter 15. Let me get there. We're going to finish this up. We've entitled this in Hide and Seek. Hide and Seek, a little friendly game, but, you know, sometimes we try to hide from the Lord. Sometimes we try to hide things that we're doing behind closed doors from the Lord. And how many know God sees everything? Amen. How many know you got rats around you? You got snitches around you. See, I was always taught snitches get stitches. Huh? Yeah. Snitches get stitches. In other words, they, uh, if you snitch, you got it coming. You got it coming. Especially who I was before. But how many times, you know, we do things behind closed doors. Now, the Bible tells us that we all have guardian angels. And our guardian angels, it says in the Bible that they see God's face on a daily so what you think you're getting away with in the dark? Nay, nay. Because you've got, 
your angel that's going to rat you out, going to snitch you out. Also, you've got the devil, who is the accuser of the brethren night and day. Don't think for not one minute that if you stumble and fall, or if you sin unknowingly, or if you're willfully sinning, don't think that the old devil ain't telling your God. Uh huh. See, the devil, the devil can go to heaven and come back here on earth. Y'all believe that? He has the power to do that. Because we have to look at Job. Because God said, hey, hey, devil, what you doing, boy? He said, I'm going to and fro in the earth. To and fro in the earth. He's looking for somebody to trip, to fall, to stumble. And then when you stumble, oh, he's going to tell God about it. He's going to rat you out. Then you have this thing called the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's number three. The Holy Spirit is here to be our counselor, our helper. Cool things about the Holy Spirit is he gives us gifts as he sees. He could give you the gift of discernment, the gift of prophecy, the gift of words of knowledge, the gift of healing, the gift of teaching, the gift of preaching. These are all gifts that he gives out to mankind to do, not to edify you, but to edify the body of Christ, which is his church. Now, I, I, uh, I, I do work in the words of knowledge, that gift, uh, discernment, and also I believe in preaching and teaching. Because I promise you when God first called me to do this, what I'm doing here in front of you today I told him, not only no, but heck no. I ain't doing that. But he took me in his word and showed me a little conversation he had with Moses when Moses told him the same thing. It says, in there, I read in there, it says, Moses gave him all the excuses. Now, how many times have we, God has asked us to do something and we didn't do it. When God clearly speaks to us through a lot of things, God speaks to us through his creation, through people, through music. Yeah, he even spoke through a donkey one time to get an old boy's attention. Read it, it's in the Old Testament. Matter of fact, King James says it was an ass. Okay? God can use a donkey to speak to the prophet. God can use this donkey here to speak to y'all. Right? God wants to speak to his people. And if God is not speaking to you, then get in line where God is. Did you know Jesus gave us a road map to find him? This is not my sermon, but I'm going to go ahead, so I'm going to go ahead and go there. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 5. Yes, ma'am. Matthew chapter 5. One of Jesus' most fam famous sermons here. And I've been studying this for 23 and a half years and never got it until the other day. How many know God won't speak to, to his people? How many know that, that God should be speaking to pastors? And lay people, and evangelists, and prophets, and apostles, and teachers. Chapter 5, verse 1. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. And his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will, get that, will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, 
for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, because they will see God. Remember, without holiness, no one can see the Lord. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs shall be the kingdom of God. Blessed when people insult you, persecute you, say falsely things about you, all kind of evil because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you, that right there, my brothers and sisters, and you watching by the internet, that is a road map to find out where Jesus is at. If you study that out and you see any of this, jump in it. Get involved. Do that. Because you'll start hearing from God. See, here's the thing. The Holy Spirit speaks to me. Spoke to me mightily on top of that mountain. And one thing I wanted to get across on top of that mountain with my leadership in Broken Chains was I went to Matthew 18. And I said this. It says if you're, I'm going to paraphrase this, it says if, you ha if your brother sins against you, go to him in private. And I stopped right there. <coughs> the number one thing that would hinder you from Hearing from God is that you have ought against your brother. Now, see, people don't realize the seriousness of that. Seriousness of that, because when people have disagreements or you get stabbed in the back or find out somebody's gossip's been about you, how many know they gossip about me? You know what the newest thing is? That I have mental issues. That's the newest one. I'm just, I'm just stark crazy. And you know something? They're right. I am crazy. I mean, who would follow a man that died on the cross? A few hands went up. Y'all were right along with me. So you're on the crazy train too, okay? We'll just keep turning it up. Keep going the way we're going on that narrow path, bless God. But I have mental issues. And they need to be careful around me because I might go off. Well, if the Holy Spirit hits me, you bet I'm going to go off. Amen. So, usually the way the Holy Spirit speaks, speaks to me is a gentle nudge. A gentle nudge. You know, and sometimes it could be like Saul of Tarsus. Now, Saul of Tarsus got knocked off his horse. I would rather much get nudged than knocked off my high horse. Mm -hmm. Come on now. So the Holy Spirit wants to talk to us and nudge us into doing what God wants us to do. See, I, I, I've met people that have sat in church all their lives and did not know what God had called them to do. And that's sad. When God gave us instructions on what we should do. Go make disciples of all nations. Guess what? That's something to do. Go catch them, but you got to clean them too. Yeah. See, that's where we fail a lot of times is we catch them. We get them through that sinner's prayer. And then we slap them on the back and say, good luck. That's not the way to do it. We catch them and we clean them. In other words, we got to disciple them because Jesus said, teach them everything that I have commanded you. Uh, well, Pastor, I, uh, I don't know what Jesus commanded me to do. Read the book. These are his commandments. Because Jesus said, they'll know you because you follow my commandments. That identifies a person of Christ. In other words, their life reflects or mirrored image the Son of God. Not only on Sunday morning. 
See, sometimes we just want to reflect God for 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour during church. Come through the door, world's upside down. We come to the door, put on our church face. Brother Shout, Sister Flip Flop, you know? And then when we go out the door, we pull that church face off and become our own mad self, own grubble. Well, now, I'm, I'm talking truth here. Yeah. Because I'm speaking, I'm preaching to myself too. Okay? Because sometimes I do that. Sometimes, as a pastor, I have to suit up and show up, whether I want to or not, because this is what I signed up for. I can remember a time when I was a kid going to church with my grandmother. And, it, and it, it seemed like God spoke so loudly back then. Because when people got to church, they didn't come to church at 1040 or 1050, because we started at 1045. But they came to church two hours early. Yeah. And the praise and worship would start. And people would flood the aisles and pray and worship God. Then by the time the pastor got up there, he wouldn't have to say a mere word one because God had already showed up and started doing the work. Amen. And as a little kid, I seen people, saw God's leg grow back six inches. Mm -hmm. I wanted to make, you know, back then they had them big platform shoes on one side. One leg was six inches Shorter than the other. But when they laid hands on him, I saw it as a little kid. I was only about that high. I was sitting on the second row looking over, my eyes all big, and saw that man's leg grow. And he tried to take a step, and that leg was higher. So he took that shoe off. He took his other shoe off, and he stood on level ground. And buddy, he went to hooping and hollering, and running around that church and praising God. When was the last time you got up and run around the church hooping and praising God? It's all quiet in here. I'm, I'm preaching to myself, too. I'm preaching to myself, too. But, you know, it was prophesied over me a little while back, maybe a month ago, a half ago, somewhere after this mess all started, and said, if I want to get what I want to get, what I want which is my marriage appeal, I was going to have to learn how to worship. And so I have begun to open myself up during worship. And I remember being up on top of that mountain and praising worship music was going. And there was a couple of people worshiping. Everybody else was all around the tent on the backside all doing this right here while the worship music was going. And I'm worshiping. There was a few people worshiping. And the Holy Spirit's like, look at all them folk over there. They too busy to worship their God. Well, that was that gentle nudge. I said, I can change that. I'm the national director. They have to do what I say. So I went to the, each little group and I said, hey, the music's playing. Get down here and worship God. And they went to every little bitty group and told them, get down here and worship God. And some moved into worship. And some stood there and kept doing this number. So I went back to them. I said, hey, I'm a national director. I said, go worship. Shut the whole place down. Everybody started worshiping. We have to enter into worship. God inhabits the praises of his people. When we get to a spot that we can just lift our hands and surrender, a freedom to be able to worship God. And I'm like, Lord, I want to worship God like King David did. Amen. That boy worshiped God so hard one time that his clothes fell off and he was in his underwear. <laughs> I said, God, I, want to, I don't want to go that far. But, but I want to worship with the same freedom 
that he worshiped with, with the same intensity that he does. Paul said, how many know that prayer is worship as well? Yeah. Paul said pray without ceasing. Now how can you do that? Because I've read that verse a million times. And I've asked the Holy Ghost, I was like, how, how can you pray without ceasing? How, how is that possible? You know, you got work, you've got kids, you've got, you know, stuff to do and whatnot. How can you how can you pray without ceasing? And I didn't figure it out until all this happened in my life. But July 31st, I found out how to keep a meditation of prayer 24-7. YouTube's a wonderful thing. It's got a lot of junk on there. But it's a wonderful thing. And I found these prayer meditations. Some of them are 10 minutes, but some of them are 8 hours of prayer and God's Word. And so I started putting on these prayer meditations. What's it called, Sabette? Grace, uh, grace, with, grace with Purpose. Grace with Purpose. Look it up on YouTube. It's a prayer meditation. They're all solid. They're solid biblical. And there's a lot of prayers that they say within that. And so I started listening to those during the day. And I would pray along. I would, I would praise along with them. And I was like, oh, this is what Paul was talking about when he said pray without ceasing. So I keep a meditation of prayer constantly going in my shop. Now I read my Bible in the morning, I hit the prayer meditations before I even get in the shower. While I'm in there scrubbing my, my hair, washing my beard, guess what? I got the prayer meditations on. I'm already praying. God, thanks for waking me up this morning. Thanks for giving me another day. Thanks for giving me another chance to get this right. And I'm going to praise you today. Whether anybody else on this planet don't praise you, Dave's praising you right here in the shower. That's what God wants from his people. That's how you build the communication. That's how when Jesus said, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Relationship. Relationship. I feel I have a good relationship with everybody in this room. And those watching us by internet. But how'd that start? Dialogue. Opening my mouth and saying, how you doing? Welcome to Gilead Baptist Church. My name's Pastor Dave. Keep coming back. I'm so grateful that you're here today. That's dialogue. Amen. Well, prayer is the same thing. It's dialogue. It's a conversation. With you and God. Now some people say, well, I just can't pray them beautiful prayers. Well, guess what? I can't either. Back early on, I used to pray some beautiful stuff. I get stuck now. I guess I'm getting old, Jim. Don't amen that. But it's dialogue. It's, that's how discipleship is. Is it's dialogue. Getting to know people through conversation. Now, how would y'all feel if y'all come in here for the first time and I didn't greet you? Maybe you've been coming a month and I never said a word to you. Well, I wouldn't go down to that church. That old pastor's a snob. I think he's better than everybody is. He dresses funny anyways. <laughs> These are my church clothes. So relationship, prayer, praises. That's what you find here in the Beatitudes. It's where God is at. And I don't know about y'all, I want to be where God's at. Because sometimes we can get jacked up a little bit. Anybody ever been jacked up? Yeah. Turn to Luke 15. Let's talk a little bit about a guy that was jacked up. 
He was jacked up from the floor up. I'm running out of time, bless God. I always have that problem. Luke what? 15. Luke 15. Let's start in 11. Now, Jesus has already talked about leaving the 99, go find that one sheep and throwing a party. And he said these interesting words. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than the 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Now, did y'all catch that? Do not need to repent. If you walk in righteousness and holiness, you don't have to repent. You're doing what God wants you to do. But if you got some hidden sin or some willful sin, you better get to repenting. We're gonna, we're gonna. Uh, that one was uh, fifteen seven. Now we'll look at uh, fifteen ten about the lost coin. Now remember, the lost coin was in the house. We talked about people coming through the doors of churches every week after week. It's still being lost as a goose in a snowstorm. I know that's possible because I sat in the church eight months before I surrendered. And he says this in verse 10, in the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of, of the angels of God when one sinner comes to repentance. Now let's look at verse 11. It says, Jesus continued. Now this is written in, written in red. So it's red letters. That's Jesus talking. It says, there was a man who had two sons. And the younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger one got and took all that he had to set off for a distant country. There he squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything they had, a severe famine hit the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him in the field to feed his pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods of the pigs that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. Verse 17. When he came to his census, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. And I am no, worthy, no, no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of the hired men. So he got up. And went to his father's. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to the son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. Verse 21. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and sinned against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the robe and put it on him. Put the ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. And let's have a feast to celebrate. For my son of mine was dead, but now he's alive. He was lost, but now he's found. So they begin to celebrate. And I'm going to stop there because we're going to pick up on back on this next week. But we have to notice a few things in the beginning of this parable of the lost son. We see the son coming to the father and saying, give me my inheritance. Now, number one, that's very disrespectful. But in the Jewish custom back then, is still the custom that we have today here in America 
you don't get the father's inheritance or the family inheritance until your daddy dead. Sometimes you don't get it then. Because after my daddy died, I had to go buy a lot of his stuff back that was in a garage sale that my stepmom was selling. She sold every cotton-picking thing he had instead of it being passed down to his siblings, which should have been four of us. But So he says to his dad, give me my inheritance. He's demanding his right, which is right. But in the Jewish custom, and here, you don't get it until they die. So what the son was saying to his father is, hey, you're dead to me. You're dead to me. Give me my stuff. Boy, I tell you what. I ain't like this father. One of my sons come to me and disrespect me to my face just like that, I'd slap the taste right out of his mouth. <laughs> Real quick. I wouldn't spare the rod, bless God. <laughs> and you didn't talk to my mama that way either. I learned that real quick after picking myself up off the floor, making sure all my teeth were still in there. <laughs> Mama's the only one that I knew could drive a car and still reach back and backhand you on the further side of the car. Yep, that was my mama. And if she could not get to you, she did not hesitate to put on the brakes <laughs> and get out and snatch you up out of that car and wear your butt out. <clears throat> but I promise you, now my mom didn't abuse me. She loved me. I was her favorite. <laughs> really, I was. <laughs> Whatever butt whooping I got, I deserve it. And usually if mom got one, and one got it, we all got it. That's four mischievous boys. I can remember putting, pushing them up front, you know. Usually my older brother got it first. Then I pushed a couple of young ones up in front of me. And I figured the way I was thinking, Claude, was the time she get to me, she'd be tired. <laughs> oh, I was wrong. The time she got to me, she was just getting good and warmed up. <laughs> My mom's the only one I knew who could throw a house shoe around the corner. She still gets you. My mom's the only one that could hold a... Uh, Y'all remember Hot Wheels? Oh, yeah. Little Hot Wheels tracks and stuff yeah. like that. Do the little loops and all that kind of stuff. I remember I, I, remember I wanted one of them bad so bad. Mama was like, what do you want? I want a Hot Wheels, Mom, with that big long track with the double loops. Until one time, Mama was mad. I don't know about y'all had a mom whatever was close you was going to get it with and one day she grabbed up one of them hot wheel tracks you know plastic tracks and wore me smoothed out guess what next Christmas I wasn't asking for hot wheel uh uh <laughs> no, them things slowly but surely disappeared real fast I don't know how mama did it, but she held that hot wheel track like a samurai warrior and announced the begin beatings will now begin. I say that funny, but I promise you, every time I got my butt wore out by my mama, I deserved it. We deserved it. But you know something? I respect my mama for them butt whoopings. It disciplined me. You know, God does the same thing to us. Disciplines us. He chastises the one that he loves. No amen there. Okay. That's all right. I amen myself. Amen, Pastor Dave. Preach on. I will. See. <laughs> and I'm also God's favorite. Because I've been taking a whopping for the last month and a half. Or actually the last year. I've been taking a whopping. So I figured God loves me better than he loves y'all's. 
because I get chastised. How about that? It's scriptural. Yeah. <laughs> it's scriptural. So you have to be careful when you see everybody wants to be up here behind the pulpit, up here where it shines. Oh, look at me. But you know, God's word says that anybody that gets behind this pulpit is charged double. It's in other words, double trouble. <clears throat> double trouble. I'll be held accountable two times. Y'all want to be counted once. But anybody that gets up in leadership and preaches and teaches and evangelizes, they're counted twice. That's scary. Yeah. That's why I respect that pulpit. Mm -hmm. Because I know I'm going to get it twice. Mm -hmm. One's going to be bad enough, but twice? Really, God? Mm -hmm. But God chastises his people. Sometimes that's easy. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's a long process. Yeah. I'm like, God, I give up. <laughs> Let me learn what I need to learn. That way I don't have to go this around this mountain again. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I don't want, I'm done, Lord. Help me. He go, he'll hold my hand. Just like Mama would do. She'd hold my hand. As I was going around in circles and she was whopping me on that butt. <laughs> God will do the same thing. Now, God's not here to beat us up. He does it because he loves us. Amen. Because no discipline, guess what? People run wild. Yeah. What happened to Moses when he went up on the, the children of Israel, when he went up on the mountain for the first time? He tarried too long for the people. They got into rebelly. A rebelly, that word? Y'all help me out from now on. And, and they piled up all the gold and silver, made them a, a, a calf, golden calf. Yep. And they was worshiping that calf. See, Moses wasn't there to, to discipline them. And the Lord knew when he said, hey, boy, you need to get down there. They messing up. That's why there's two sets of Ten Commandments, because the first one's got broke. And Moses went to Aaron, which was supposed to look after the people. He said, hey, boy, what happened here? Well, they put that in there, and this golden calf just popped out. No. Okay. You think God's going to buy that? No. 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 So what did Moses do? Grounded it. He grounded it to powder that golden calf, and made the children of Israel drink it. Mm. Mm. Come on. Come on. Yeah, true. True story. Read it. It's in there. So God wants to bless his people. God wants to speak to his people. God wants to love on his people. Amen. God wants to challenge us here this morning To win the lost. Bring hurting people. When we, you know, the Bible says when one mourns, we should all mourn. Amen. When one get honored, guess what? We all get honored. Amen. I believe every body of Christ should be a tight-knit family. Yep. That when one calls for prayer, we should all stop and pray. That's why we have the messenger page. You know, there's a gentleman here that comes to our celebrate recovery. He's on a walk to Emmaus and fell over. His blood pressure bottomed out. Not only once but twice, and the second time they took him by ambulance to the hospital. Come to find out his potassium and sodium levels were off or something that caused that. But I put it out on the page. And y'all begin to comment, pray. I love that. That we would take time out of our busy schedule to pray for somebody. But on the flip side of that, sometimes you guys go through stuff. And I find out days later that you went through some stuff. I'm not psychic. 
But that's what that page is for. Miss Harriet fell. Didn't even know it. Was in the hospital. She's not feeling very well today is the reason she's not here. And I didn't find out until later on. Well, I had a little talk with her. Huh? When something happens to you, you can call me. You got my number. If something happens to y'all, call me. Because I want to stand in the gap. And if I need to go to the hospital and pray over you, I will. Or you can come by my shop. I'll pray over you before you leave. Yep. Yep. I got no problem shutting down my day and addressing something that's going on in y'all's lives. You know, God's Word said, and I'll wrap up with this, God's Word says that take on one another's burdens. In doing this, you fulfill the law of Christ. In other words, we should care enough about each other that when one's sick, one's hurting, one's having a bad day, when one mourns, we should mourn with them. One's sick, we should pray for healing. The Bible said, call the elders of the church. Anoint them with all, and a prayer of faith shall heal them. But I've asked people to come up forward and get, you know, pray for healing. And they not come forward. And then I find out a couple of days later, they're, they went in for surgery. It's like, why didn't you come down and let me pray over you? It's so important. It's so important to become up there on top of that mountain in Eureka Springs, this ministry of broken chains was changed. Because I wasn't the only one touched. I have heard hundreds of testimonies on how God dealt with and touched people up there. We're a close, tight-knit family again. And I want our church to be the same way. But we can't be like the parable of the lost son. Who demands and then goes out the door. Amen? Amen. Y'all still love me? Yep. Yes. Okay, good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity to be here with my church family. Father God, your church family. Father, nobody's here by accident. Nobody's watching us by internet by accident today, Father God. Lord, I pray that they were encouraged because I'm encouraged. If I stepped on her toes, well, bless God, because I stepped on my own toes. Father, your word is supposed to build us up, challenge us, and rebuke us. Father, we thank you that your word is solid and it's truth. If there's anything that we can believe, it's this book called the Bible. So, Father, as we disperse here and go our different directions, Father God, Lord, I just pray. Lord, that your spirit that I've felt here today, Father God, would go with us. May we always be in a meditation of prayer, Father God. Lord, that would be that witness that you have called us to do. Father, let them remember the words that were spoken here today. Because most of it wasn't even in my sermon notes, so I know it's straight from you. Father, let us be encouraged. Let us find favor in you. Let your face shine upon us. In Jesus' name I pray. God's people said. Amen. amen and amen. Y'all go ahead and shut those cameras down, please. Y'all make sure to like and share this. And uh